is cancer and aging the same disease? And yeah, they, they, they actually technically are. I mean, so when you think about it, so cancer is a cell that has a mutation. It wants to live. So what does it do? It tricks the immune system to allow it to live. That's how cancer survives. Cancer doesn't survive on its own. It has to have help of the immune system. And so cancer will send signals and get the immune system working with it. And that's, that's how it, it works. And then you look at older cells. So the cells are getting older and they're wearing out and they're not doing what they should do and they should be replaced. But they don't want to, they don't want to die. So they're sending signals to the immune system as well. And they're also like telling the immune system, hey, don't kill me. And they're staying around and they're sending their old signals and spreading their old messages to the other cells and corrupting the other cells as well. Just like the cancer. Cancer is aging the patients. And of course we see the older cells also doing the same. And so, so when we look at it, you know, the immune system seems to be what controls aging. And so this is re really, you know, obviously some people felt this. We weren't really sure where, you know, aging was controlled from. But you look at it, you look at like the cytokines. I mean, interleukin-1, you know, interleukin-6, interleukin-11, all the, all the data that's coming with this, TGF-beta. I mean, all these things where these cytokines are playing a major role in aging. They're causing the aging process. And so, so when we see that we're using drugs that we're treating cancer, then we see that the patients are actually getting younger. And that's what we were finding. We treat their cancer, and then the patients get younger. Now that was really interesting, because of course, like, most cancer therapies were not designed that way. Most cancer therapies are that the cells are old. Let's make them older and die. Let's give them chemo, let's give them radiation so they get older and they die. And that's the standard treatment. It's not to make them younger. So it was, was the wrong way. So you know, that's, that's you know, one of the things that we, we see is that you know, we start treating the patients with immunotherapy and the patients, their tissues were getting younger. I mean, I had patients like their livers were bad. I give them cancer immunotherapy. Now all of a sudden their liver regenerates. And you start looking and saying, gosh, wait a minute, you know, their arthritis is better. Their spine is better. Other things are better, but I'm giving them immunotherapy. I'm treating their cancer, yet I'm making them younger. So, you know, it's, you know, it's really interesting that that connection, but when you see it, you can see the, the, how the parallel between cancer and the old tissues. So of course, you know, when we cure cancer, which we know basically how to do now with immunotherapies, we can cure some you know, advanced cancers. Then we also know how to cure aging, which we also know how to do now as well. So we do both. So we have the situation where we can treat both, where the immune system is what keeps you young. That's what keeps you young. And so when you stimulate the immune system properly, there's another part of the immune system that people didn't see. You know, everybody sees the side, they say, there's one that attacks things like bacteria, viruses, cancer. And there's another that protects you against that from being over aggressive. But there was a middle one. There was one they didn't see. It doesn't, it doesn't actually stimulate a significant aggressive immune response, but it eliminates a lot of the older senescent cells and so, and now, and now we know how to, to, to manage this. And this is, of course, what we're doing. And particularly when you look at it, it's heavily involved with TGF-beta, with interleukins. And so, you know, when you look at, like, the things of aging, and you look at, like, well, David Sinclair with his work with his, you know, information theory of aging. I'm a huge fan of David Sinclair, completely believe in a lot of stuff he does. And I thought that he was kind of right. I said, you know, I think, I think that, that this makes sense. We should, we should study this. But then I started looking at the stuff that he uses to reprogram. It's the same drugs that we use to treat cancer. TGF beta inhibitors, other stuff. I started seeing it as like, these are the same drugs. It's the same thing. So then, I, and I, of course, I studied this and found out that this is true, was that we could take people and we could treat them and we could treat their immune system not activating the genes, not activating Yamanaki factors as people thought, but affecting only the immune system and they still got younger. So you replace the drugs. So instead of using something like where it would activate SOX2, 
which I might think is, is being one part of the thing, you do a TGF beta inhibitor and it still works. You don't need that. And the other part is that once you start the process going, the immune system takes over. You don't have to keep giving the people the drugs. They get younger and younger by themselves. The immune system takes over and does it. And that's, that's what we're seeing. But you look at like treatments for cancer. So, you know, obviously TGF beta inhibition, um, it's an area, it's amazing. I mean, TGF beta was first discovered in the late 70s. It was really kind of ignored, but everybody's looking out of context. I mean, you have to look at this as a whole system with an immune system. Everybody's looking at cells. Like, what does it do with a cell? That's not the same. What does it do with the whole body? How does it interact with the whole body? And that's why they missed it. So then, of course, the gut microbiome. I mean, look at this, like, we use the gut microbiome a lot to treat cancer, to enhance the immune response. You can take a gut microbiome from a patient who's younger, transfer to a patient who's older, and you will see age reversal. That's been shown. So, of course, cytokines, manipulating the cytokines. Well, interleukin-1. Interleukin-1, inhibiting interleukin-1 with the drug anakinra was more anti-aging than doing blood transfer from old, you know, from young blood to old blood. That, you know, the same studies. That, that's where the real factors were. They're, they're in the, the interleukins. And so, and then the HDACs. HDACs are, you know, immune enhancing. They open up the, the DNA, allow for different reading. And so certainly these things were kind of ignored, but they were seen to be very anti-cancer. And it was surprising that you, know, you start looking at these things together and you start seeing all the, the different anti-aging process. And then you start looking, where's the data? Well, then you start, you check it out, TGF beta. Regular aging, right? Gut microbiome, aging. Interleukin-1, aging. HDAC, aging. All cancer treatments, all anti-aging. It's the same disease. Cancer and aging are the same disease. They're a little bit different. The cancer has some mutations that makes it want to do things, but it wants to live. Old cells want to live. It's the same thing. So when you alert the immune system, to attack these, which you can do, which you understand how to do now, then it makes the person younger. So, and so you know, why, why do we age? I mean, you know, you have all the DNA that were, you know, when you're a baby, I could clone you, I could make you, I could make a baby of, a, of any person. So, so why, why do we age? What happens? I mean, you know, we obviously have things with methylation and those parts, and there's, there's definitely some things there that are integrated with it and we don't fully understand yet, but I think we're getting there. But we do understand enough now to, to manipulate it and to make it work. So, you know, as you can see, you know, we have all the pieces of the puzzle there. I mean, we can, we can reverse aging, reverse aging with immunotherapies. The reprogramming is immunotherapies. These are all immune agents. It's the immune system that keeps you young. So cancer, to protect itself, it tricks the immune system to allow it to live. The old cells are doing the same thing. And so that's you know, kind of what, what we've seen. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the similarities and the similarities between cancer and aging. And it's really you know, astounding that they are basically the, the same disease and the treatments are the same and the responses are the same. And that's, and that's, that's what we're finding. I can show cases, I didn't have the, final image there, but this is the case, this is actually my mother, I don't know where my mother's at, <laughs> but so she's here, and so I treated her spine, so I actually have a spine MRI that we did last night, unfortunately it's not on here, but the CT scan is a scan on the left, that's from August 2022, the MRI is from April of this year. Before you can see bone on bone, no disc. Now you see the disc coming back. And so we're reversing the process. We're aging it in reverse. Yeah. And so we figured it out. We figured it out with, with, with a combination in its, its immunotherapies. And it's the immune system. The immune system will make you young. It will take you back young again. To what state, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, but we think that everybody could basically be you know, in their 20s, 
And really, we never needed to age. If you treat people early and keep their immune system alert, they don't need to get old. That wouldn't happen. You can stop it. You can stop the whole process. And that's what we figured out. <laughs>